Hi everyone, I'm Ali. Welcome to 5,000 Years. I received many comments asking me about this. Like, what is it? Why am I wearing it? And does it mean anything? So in today's video, let's talk about this. First of all, the one on the forehead, it's called Hua Dian in Chinese. There's a legend about how this became popular. During the Northern and Southern Dynasties, there was a princess called Shou Yang. She loved plum blossoms and was admiring them in the palace. Well, I can't find any plum blossom trees near me, so here I am with cherry blossom trees. The princess got tired, so she laid down beneath a palace roof and fell asleep. There was a plum blossom tree nearby, and the plum flower fell onto her forehead. When she woke up, it left a floral imprint. She couldn't get it off until three days later. All the ladies in the palace loved it, so they tried to copy it, and it became a trend. This story happened during the Southern Dynasty era. However, there are paintings and clay figurines with red markings on their foreheads that date back many dynasties before the Southern Dynasty. It was believed that the history of Warring Hua Dian can be traced back to as early as the Warring States period. This fashion trend became extremely popular by the Tang Dynasty, when women wore all kinds of designs. They would draw them in the shapes of animals, stars, the moon, water droplets, coins, and of course, flowers, especially plum blossoms, because of Princess Shou Yang. They would also cut paper into the desired shapes and paste them on, as well as using butterfly or dragonfly wings, bird feathers, and gold leaves. By the late Tang Dynasty, it expanded to putting Hua Dian all over the place. We can see many examples from Dunhuang cave murals. These decorations on the temples are called Xie Hong. Doesn't it look like a scar to you? It actually is supposed to resemble one. The story goes that during the Three Kingdoms period, Emperor Cao Pi had a consort in the palace named Xue Yelai. She was new and wasn't familiar with the surroundings. The emperor liked to read under the candle at night, and he was surrounded by tall crystal screens. One night, Yelai came and accidentally ran into one of the screens and hit her temple. After she wiped out the blood, her face looked like a beautiful sunrise. Her scar didn't make her less popular. On the contrary, she won the heart of the emperor with her amazing sewing skills. So all the other consorts tried to copy her by drawing the scar on their temples. And that became a new trend. The one on the dimples are called Ye Dian. As you can guess, it's supposed to resemble the dimples on the face. There's also a story behind it. In another country of Wu during the Three Kingdoms period, the crown prince Sun He had a favorite concubine, Lady Deng. One night, the prince was waving a crystal Rui around. Rui is a curved, decorative scepter. He accidentally hit Lady Deng's face that made her bleed. So he asked the doctor to make some topical medications that could get rid of the scars. The doctor used expensive materials like amber powder in the formula, but they added a little too much. After Lady Deng was healed, she had red dots on her face, which in the crown prince's eye made her even prettier. The other concubines then also put red dots on their faces. During the Tang Dynasty, the Hua Dian on the forehead, Xie Hong on the temples, and Ye Dian on the dimples were part of the standard makeup routine for ladies. By the Song Dynasty, empresses would use pearls in place of Hua Dian, Xie Hong, and Ye Dian. Yuan and Ming Dynasty ladies would also use facial decorations during special occasions. By the Qing Dynasty, ladies were no longer wearing any facial decorations like this. Only kids would wear a red dot on the forehead for good luck. So unlike Bindi from Hindu culture, which represents a woman's martial status, the facial markings in China were mostly ornamental, with the exception of a record from the Han Dynasty that said consorts and concubines used to put a red dot on the face to indicate their menstrual period had arrived, and therefore they could not serve the kings or emperors. 
out of the three types of facial decorations in ancient China, which one do you think is the most beautiful? Or which story do you like the most? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you learned something useful in today's video. I'll be making more videos about traditional Chinese culture and values, as well as Chinese fashion and history. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to learn more. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.